I'll tell you a, a, a little story. So this is an example of um, very old school, not modern, but old school um, customer service, really good customer service. Uh, who here is from Australia? One, okay, so, so you, might, you might be able to relate to this. So this, this is when I was in university in Melbourne about 20 years ago. Australia is, is a great coffee culture, right? Uh, they, they serve the best tasting coffee. Uh, but what they don't do is serve cinnamon with their lattes and cappuccinos. All they have is chocolate powder. And, and I love my cinnamon on my coffee. So I went to a, a hotel bar crown casino in Melbourne. Uh, I went to a hotel bar asking, hey, and I, I want to order an, a, a latte and can I have some cinnamon with it as well. The, the, the folks there were all confused. What's that? I, I can't do an Australian accent, so I won't try. But they were confused. So we don't have that. We only have chocolate powder. I'm like, that's OK. Just give me my latte. I'll be fine. Right? Um, about five minutes later, which is a long time, right? because I, I was just in a, sat in the bar um, for, for coffee to arrive. Coffee did arrive with um, a freshly grated cinnamon uh, to, to the side. I'm like, I thought you guys didn't have it. Where, where did it come from? Uh, they were very kind of modest and didn't want to say anything, right? Uh, they, but I, I pushed for it. I got the manager to say, hey, how, how did you guys get this? It turns out one of the uh, uh, waitress back then actually went to the other side of the hotel to a Chinese restaurant and actually asked, do you have any um, uh, cinnamon? And they actually um, um, hand grated the cinnamon there and gave it back to me. I mean, that is exceptional customer service. And you know, the, the example there is really just about uh, staff, right, uh, is empowered to actually just do good by the customer. And that was 20 years ago, and it stuck by me. And it's just a most example, um, an awesome example of customer service. Yeah. So I'm Shell and Chuan. So I head up digital uh, customer experience and integrations within Barclay Card Commercials um, uh, Payments. So I'll tell you a little bit about the business later. But I, I traditionally have been a product manager all my life in uh, travel technology. So I used to work for Expedia.com, LastMinute.com here in, in, in London, and Travelocity in, in, the, in the US and Asia Pacific. So uh, I grew up uh, learning how to um, 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 develop web products and then mobile products, obviously, uh, in, in the travel space and in, a, in an e-commerce marketplace um, uh, sector. So I joined Barclay Card four years ago, and um, I, I joined the B2B uh, division of uh, Barclay Card, which is a very, very different uh, experience for me. You know, I, all, my, all my career is all about B2C, serving B2C customers. But B2B, so, so we power B2B commerce, as, um, just like what uh, Des, Des mentioned uh, previously. So we power payments for um, uh, uh, B2B commerce. So, so what we are, so we provide uh, payment solutions for businesses, small and large, to be able to pay other businesses. In, in a nutshell, that's what we do. And the top there, so we've got products, corporate cards. You guys all would have corporate cards issued by, by your companies. We've got travel management accounts and fuel cards, where basically anybody who spend money on behalf of their businesses, we, we, we provide those both physical and virtual cards. And it's all about control and reconciliation and just making it easier for, for uh, uh, folks to buy stuff to but make sure at the end of the day their books are clean. But where, where, where we really differentiate and where we think we're disrupting the B2B commerce is in the, 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 the two products on the bottom there, uh, Barclay Card Precision Pay, so that's a product of ours, and, and, and other sort of purchasing solutions. So what we do, we believe we're transforming the accounts payable department of the future. So any procurement officer, anybody who spends money and buy per, uh, you know, um, um, raw materials, uh, be it you know, your factory or even services organization, right? If you have thousands of suppliers, you don't want your staff members to be able to have to go through every single invoice, every single purchase order, and manually reconcile. What we have is automated systems, uh, it's sort of like the predict predictive banking that, that Mark uh, mentioned previously, where we can predict, okay, if you've got you know, 10,000 orders in the next month, we can let you know what's the best payment solutions for you to use. Is it a card? Is it a faster payment? Is it a, um, a bank transfer? Right. Um, at the end of the day, it's all about convenience and reconciliation, but more, and, uh, more um, uh, importantly, for especially small businesses, it's all about cash flow. Right? For small businesses, right, day and day, right, we have to make sure that they can survive, right, that they have cash in the bank. So, so we provide um, uh, cash flow solutions so, so businesses can survive, really. So, so that's a little bit about us. Um, but what, what I wanted to share with you is kind of a couple of things. How we think about our B2B customers, because they're, they're quite complex, as well as um, uh, how we actually encourage them to, to adopt to our digital solution. So that's, the, that's really the, why, what, what I wanted to share with you guys. So from a B2B perspective, we have clients, right, from sole traders 
you know, one-man shows all the way up to multinational uh, corporations. So, so these are personas. We, we actually work with uh, Oracle's uh, CX team. So, so thank you, Wojciech Pluta and uh, Adi Sarda. And we came up with personas. And these are examples, but this is a real subset of uh, folks that we um, uh, serve, really. So for our corporate clients, right, what we know about corporate clients is we have corporate clients with users and hundreds to thousands of users within, within the corporation. Um, oftentimes, their roles are very specialized. Right? They're very distinct. You know, you've got finance folks, you've got marketing folks, you've got sales folks, but they're very distinct and they're very, very specialized and sometimes siloed. And then there's both kind of the good and bad of that. But uh, what we also definitely know is that their, their, their work self is quite different from their you know, personal self. So, so we have to cater for you know, how they use mobile phones, how do they use um, uh, um, laptop and, 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 and their desktop computers, and uh, um, how, you know, do we merge or do we actually to make, make sure it's kind of not um, incongruent with their personal life. So, so three personas here. So uh, Helen, who is a, a CFO, she's the decision maker and she cares about the commercials of any deals, right? She's the, the, the one that will decide whether a deal should be made, whether she should buy a service. So for, in our case, our payment services. And, and she, uh, she cares most about the commercial. So we have to make sure that when we tell her about our products and services and, and when we enter into partnership, it makes sense for her. Uh, 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 Alan, uh, in, in the middle, is our corporate card program administrator. So I think most of you guys would have uh, these folks within your organization. So they're the ones that will manage if you're new to your organization, uh, uh, for you to get a corporate card, uh, or you'll have to go through Ellen. You probably have to fill up a paper form. Hopefully, it's, uh, it's, it's digital. What Ellen cares about, especially if you manage, a, say, a company like Oracle, where you've got you know, tens and thousands of staff, that's a lot of paperwork you've got to do. So, so how do we make it easy for Ellen to, at the end of the day, be able to just use digital tools that will make his life easier, but also his stakeholders, in this case, probably all you guys, life's easier as well when you get the card and when you travel. And then um, uh, uh, Laura on the, on the right-hand side is pretty much, I think, everyone in this room as well, right? Uh, we are professionals. We travel a lot. We spend a lot on behalf of our companies, right? So all we want to make sure is when we go, when we travel, say, to a foreign company, uh, c country, sorry, that your card works, that you're not stuck in the middle of uh, Dubai or Madrid or Los Angeles and you can't spend and you really don't want to use cash, you don't want to use your personal card as well. So how do we make it as easy and convenient as, uh, as possible for, yeah, um, for, for, for these um, uh, cardholders to be able to just go about do what they want to do, sell to people, market to people? Yeah. Um, at the end of the day, how we cater for our clients is to give them control. So, so for Alan, uh, as, as, as an example, we would issue out a lot of um, uh, payment and credit cards to fleet truck drivers. right? In this case, we want to make sure that those truck drivers can fuel up as necessary when they go on to the M25, A1, and whatnot, whatnot. But we probably don't want those drivers to spend in a pub, say. Right? That's not healthy, probably. It's kind of dangerous when you're, when you're driving. So, so we would empower Alan to be able to put controls in, space, uh, in, in, in place to make sure there's only certain type of spending that you can do on cards. So, so don't be surprised if you go to a pub, if. Um, uh, if, if you can't spend it, it's, it's probably, you know, your, your a company and administra administrator thinks you're probably dodgy or you had some bad experience there. Right, so, so ask them. And then on, on the bottom, we've got um, our, our small and medium enterprise uh, companies, right? So, so small um, companies, one-man bands, you know, sometimes only five to ten folks, right? But what we know, and I think you guys can em em um, empathize, is they wear multiple hats, right? They are the business owner. They are the, uh, the manager, the day-to-day -day manager. They, they do all the grunt work. They do all the paperwork. And these guys are the ones that's probably most stressed out and most tight for time. All right, so, so what we need to be able to do is provide them with as much convenience as possible so they can do what they're good at. If you are a baker, you want to just bake cakes. You don't really want to worry about your, your, your finances. Right? So, so that's, that's what um, uh, we need to, to, to cater for them. And then oftentimes, the work self and the personal self for uh, SME clients especially is much more congruent, much more tied together. Right? So as, as, a, as a real example, we absolutely have um, um, uh, uh, clients who would actually call us at night, because we, uh, we, we run 24-7, 1 a.m. at that time, so they just got back from a job, like a, a construction company, uh, and at, at midnight, they'll call us and hey, what's happening with my um, uh, balances? Because they, they need to know, right? Uh, 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 so, so we need to be able to provide that service anytime during the day. 
during the day for, for them. So that's just an, a, a very small subset of customer personas that we cater for. And how do we do this is, in, in banking terms, uh, we have um, hierarchies called entitlements uh, or um, uh, um, hierarchies of um, user personas where in the, in the tools that we provide for our customers, we uh, make sure that they have the right levels of access to be able to do things. Right? So the story here is um, we have digital platforms and we relaunched one um, uh, about three, month, uh, three years ago where we provided a you know, new and improved online servicing um, portal for clients to be able to manage the, the products, their finances. What we found is building the technology is actually very easy. So we actually create a hierarchy, so a business owner versus a director of the company versus a card user all has different access, so whiz bang technology, really, really great stuff. However, when we launched it in 2015, right, we actually found that the uh, adoption of the tool was, was very low. Right? Um, clients still call us through the phone to, 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 to manage their account. Sometimes they would actually write letters to us to, to, to make the inquiries. Uh, um, and so, so we had to kind of transform the way uh, we thought about digital adoption. Right? Our assumption was build it and they would come, in this case. Uh, uh, we had some marketing, offline and online marketing, to be able to kind of hopefully getting that organic adoption, and that didn't work. So this, there's comes kind of lesson learned here for, for any companies, really, B2B or B2C. So what we had to do is we actually had to make our operations center, our customer service center, at work. Um, we know that we get uh, tens and thousands of calls uh, per week, per month, for clients who want to engage with us. So what better way uh, to get clients and educate clients on, on the great tools and products that we have, right, uh, when, um, um, when they're on the phone with us. So, so what we did is we actually empowered our customer service agents to, to be able to kind of selectively talk to clients and say, hey, okay, you've got this problem. We actually have a nice solution for you. Um, not that we want, we want to push you away, but you can actually self-service this yourself. So, you know, register here, log in here, and you'd be able to do this in the future. So, so that... Um, it gives the, the customer service agents that the, that the targeted opportunity to basically help the clients on the spot, but also educate them that they'll be able to self-service them uh, in the future. And, and that, that worked them out really well. We also form uh, specialized uh, digital adoption teams, so kind of level two teams. So if there's any more kind of more technical questions, we can hand off to a really specialized team who was very well versed with, with our platforms. And again, to be able to talk to the clients, to, to, again, it, it's all about um, uh, um, creating that awareness and um, a, a education. Um, early 2017, so last year, what we did um, uh, furthermore is we then had tools in place um, where we were able to target when a client called us, right, we were able to um, uh, um, kind of almost know the reason for calls, right? Is it to check their balance? Is it to pay off their credit card? Is it to um, add new card holders to their accounts, right? And what we then did is, again, empower our customer service agents to be able to just have the right targeted um, uh, um, uh, uh, conversations with our clients um, to, to help them. Right? We, we haven't done this in, um, but what, what we'd be able to do is, in, in, the, in the future, put policies in place to maybe even block the call and say, you know what, for this particular thing, unfortunately we can't help you, why don't you self-service? We, 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 we're not going to that extreme yet because uh, we're in the transition phase, but we can do that, you know, and, and that saves costs for operation center, right? But uh, uh, one that we don't think is uh, the right thing to do by our clients for now. Uh, through partnership with the, uh, with the Oracle team, um, uh, Steve Roberts and team, uh, we, uh, we also um, have um, uh, the, the service, Oracle Service Cloud uh, products uh, that, that we leverage. So a, a very uh, initial one right now is live chat, right? So we basically just opened up a new channel for our, our uh, customer service agents to be able to chat to three clients at once, right? And, and that um, uh, pretty much doubled the productivity of our customer service agents, rather than just one person on, on, on the phone at all times, right? Three chats, they may be longer in time uh, than, than, than a phone call, but we were able to talk to three clients um, uh, um, um, and, and resolve their, their, their problems quite, quite quickly. And then last but not least, and this is kind of probably just a lesson learned, is um, uh, Barclay Card, uh, as a business, uh, celebrated its 50th uh, uh, birthday two years ago. And Barclay Card Commercial, so my business, uh, uh, celebrated its 50th birthday this year, so about two months ago. So it's really, it's really great. So we're an old business. Uh, but we do have clients that's been with us for around 30, 40 years, right? So it's great. We call them legacy clients, but they're, they're, they're really our, our most valued clients. 
But when these clients uh, came to us in 1970, 1980, they pretty much just had paper forms and we've just been servicing them. What we have now is almost kind of debt, right? But sometimes we don't have email addresses and phone numbers of these clients yet. Right? So the only means for us to communicate with them would be paper, which is really bad. So, so, so we have this, this debt and what we did is we, we have a huge drive to be able to just get, and you know, for most companies it would probably be very simple, but just to get up-to-date personal data, email address, uh, um, uh, phone, mo mobile numbers, and sometimes even physical addresses, right? You get them updated so that we can actually um, uh, communicate to clients. Right. So, 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 so we're laden with uh, legacy, uh, unfortunately being, being part of a bank, but that's what we are. But using this and a lot of other kind of partnerships we're doing with, with Oracle, we, we were able to um, uh, engage with clients a whole lot more. So, so what's the result? So, so we were from a low single digit number about three years ago, but about half of our book now so around, um, we have around a quarter of a million of uh, um, uh, corporate clients. About half of the book now are digitally uh, um, engaged and registered, which is really great. And more importantly, it's this really surprising stat probably for most companies, 70% of digital adoption does not come organically or through marketing, even though there is um, a, a really important channel, but 70% of digital adoption for us comes from our ops center because we actually proactively invested in clients calling us and we would get them uh, to, to promote the, the digital adoption and engagement with us. Thank you, guys. I've just got one question. Um, you yeah, sure. talked about live chat. Yep. Do you think in that regulated environment, do you think you will move to uh, bot chat, using chat bots and things like that, rather than live? Yes, yes, ab absolutely. So, uh, yeah. In, in the banking industry, we're, we're highly regulated, so different types of conversations have to be either very secure or non-secure. Yeah. But we actually have examples of um, uh, bot chats already okay. uh, in, our, in our consumer uh, okay. uh, business. So it's actually through Facebook Messenger, and it's doing really well. Yeah. Uh, but uh, I think for our business, you know, usually commercial you know, uh, businesses are five to ten years in terms of uh, laggards, yeah, yeah, yeah. right, to, to adopt yeah. technology, but we're absolutely um, are going to be there. All we have to do really is leverage the technology, but make sure we can train the machines as well uh, to stick within the regulations. So, yeah. you know, have the right level gotcha. of conversation, right? But differentiate if there's a line there that needs to be crossed, we hand off to a human. To, to a human. Yeah. Brilliant. Yeah. Sheldon, thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Thank you. And if you can take that. Sure. Wonderful. Thank you. I'll take that too.